So today's tutorial will be about creating a teleport effect and we've kind of got this laser that goes up and down and marks where the um, object is going to appear and disappear. You can use any type of mesh to do this and it should work although if it's complex it might be a bit more difficult. We're going to be using text as normal. And here's how you do it. So I've got my regular text object which I normally use for the tutorials and it's still in its editable form. And because we're going to be actually using booleans for this effect, I'm going to have to convert it into a mesh. And so I'm just going to reduce the resolution of the curves to around 2 before converting, just so there's a bit less geometry when I do convert. And then I'm going to press Alt-C, Mesh from Curve. And then in Edit Mode, I'm going to press W and remove the doubles. And it's removed 186 vertices. I'm then going to add an edge split modifier just because at the minute the shading looks a bit weird and that's because it's trying to smooth edges that should really be flat and the edge split modifier will remove all that because it's uh, splitting edges that are above 30 degrees so these 90 degree edges will be split and the shading will be corrected. I'm then going to go into front view and just place the 3D cursor in the middle somewhere and shift A and add a cube and I'm going to go into the object panel for the cube and change its display type to wire so we can see the text behind because the cube's just really going to be acting as a mask effectively. So I'm then going to press S and X and then G and X just to move it and size it and then S and Z to scale it up and although this doesn't really matter just to neaten it up we're going to reduce the width a bit. Back into front view and I'll move it so it's halfway up so we can see the effect of what we're doing and on the text I'm going to add a boolean modifier and I'll just move that below the edge split and the object we're going to choose is the cube and you can see it's already cut away some of the text now the reason why we had to convert it was that text objects can't use modifiers like booleans but I don't actually want this effect it's cutting away the wrong part of the text so I'm going to change it to Difference, and it has cut away the top part of the text. So I'm just going to select the cube, press N to bring up the properties, and then lock the X and Y transform. And that's so it can only move up and down. If I do move it, you can see in real time it's cutting away the 3D text. Now on my original, I also had a little blue strip to show that's where the text was being cut away. And to do that, I'm going to move the cube up a bit, press shift D to duplicate it, so I've now got a, a copy here and then I'm going to go into edit mode, shift D this, press Z and bring it down and this gap here is going to be the size of the second boolean which is going to leave this section of the text untouched and just because I know there'll be an error if I don't do this, I'm going to face select and select the bottom face of the top section and I'm just going to move it up slightly otherwise the faces that it cut would be in exactly the same position as the other boolean and if you want to just see the effect of that then just don't move that face and you'll see it will cause a few rendering errors so now I'll just go into object mode I'm going to duplicate my text but instead of using cube as the object I'm going to use cube 1 because that's going to be the cube that I duplicated and so now you can see highlighted is this middle section which will act as our beam for the teleport effect. And you can see here where the, we're getting a few flickering errors and if I hadn't moved that face you would have also seen that flickering on top. So we fixed the ones on top and to fix the ones at the side I'm going to go into edit mode and to front view. So we're actually going to scale the text up and we're going to do that with the shrink flatten tool and that's done with alt s and that actually scales along the normals and if you go too far it will uh, obviously go a bit wrong so I'm just going to hold shift down and you can see this is the original size and I'm just going to scale it up to here and if I had a bit more time I would correct a few of the errors it's created and they'll be more visible later but you can see we're just overlapping a bit now now that we've expanded and we've got rid of that flickering edge also I, I did actually want it slightly bigger because that simply creates a, a nicer effect. I'm just going to quickly change the text to smooth shading and our second one that we duplicated that's also set to smooth 
And just so we can see the effects, I'm going to set up a few basic materials. So this one is going to be a bright red, and this one can be a bright blue. And what I'm actually going to do, because we need to move both of these objects at once that we created as masks, I'm going to press Shift A, add an empty, and move it up. Select our individual cube, and then the double cube, and then select the empty, Control P, and parent. And I'm also going to change the transform locks on this so it can again only move on the Z axis. And if I move it, you can see we've got a blue strip moving up, which is slightly bigger than the red. And it is kind of revealing the uh, letters. Now, down here, you can see in the blue strip, there's a few errors. And that's what I talked about, cleaning the mesh up a bit. And that's just because you used shrink flatten on the text. And so really should go in and clean up a few of those bits. But mainly that's the effect created. And just to make it a bit easier again, I'm going to press Shift A and add another empty. Move that above everything. And then I'm going to select other empty, our first text object and our second text object, and our new empty, and press Control P. And that means when I move it around, everything moves with it. But we can still move this controller as well. So I'm just going to undo that so we're back at the same position. And then I will go and animate it. And it's this controller that we're going to be animating because this controls the uh, whether how much of the text is visible. So we're going to start off with it fully invisible. I'm going to press I and location. And then I'm going to move forward 10 frames. Move it all the way up so all the text is visible. I and then location. And then go to frame 30. So there's a 20 frame rest. I location. And then frame 40, it will disappear again. And finally, I, and then location. And if I just play that back, text appears, holds for a few seconds, and then disappears again. And because I had multiple text objects appearing and disappearing, giving the effect that they are the same one, but teleporting, I'm just going to go into wireframe mode and making sure you're um, at a part where you can see both the blue objects and the red. Otherwise, you won't be able to select it. I'm going to select everything, Shift D, and then Escape to cancel the move. And then just in top view, I'll move it and then maybe rotate it. And so now we've got an exact copy. You can still move it by using the main controller. And you can still control the teleport effect with the other controller. But at the minute, they still both act at the same time. And to fix this, I'm going to bring up a new area, change it to the dope sheet. I'm then going to click this little icon, which means I only want to view keyframes for the selected object. And then I'm going to press G and move them to maybe about frame 50. So when I'm moving them across, I'm moving them in the timeline. And you can see them moving down here as well. So I'm just going to move them to after the first one has appeared and disappeared. So if we go through again, first one appears and then disappears, and then the second one appears and then disappears. And of course you can do this as many times as you want. Now I'm actually going to delete this second one because we don't actually need it for the tutorial. And then really the only things left to set up is the rendering and a small bit of compositing. And to do that I have a third layer which includes just a backplane, which uh, has a subsurf modifier on it. And I'm going to change its material in the shadow settings to uh, shadows only. So it will only show the shadows and everywhere else it will be transparent. In the world settings, I'll create a new world and create it just below white to non environment lighting. And for the final version, you might want to put this up to 10 to remove some of the grain that might appear. I'm also going to set this to 50 for the tutorial, and then we're going to set up a few render layers. So we've got our first render layer, and the reason we're doing this is that I only want the glow to appear on our actual blue mesh and not the red one. And to be able to apply it to different parts of the image once it's rendered, we use render layers. So the red part of the mesh is going to stay on layer 1, but the blue I'm going to move to layer 2 by pressing M then 2. 2, here it is, and on 1 is the red. So for layer 1, I'm only going to render layer 1 and 3. So pressing Shift, I'm going to select the third layer so that it renders the background for the shadows. 
and I'm going to click the plus icon and change this to text glow and the only layer we want this to render is layer 2 and we don't want it to render the sky and that's so everything else will remain transparent around it so we can put it on top of the other text in the composite but you'll see that later now one thing before we render is that we have these cubes visible but we don't want them to appear in the render so I'm going to select the double one press ctrl H to hide it from the render and then I'll select the top single one ctrl H to hide it from the render and if I just press F12 it renders the blue and in the background it will have re rendered the red although we can't see that so changing to the node editor I'll change to the node view we want to use nodes we want to backdrop so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to shift A and add an output viewer and connect that up so now we can see the red because we're on the main render layer and it has the shadows because we included layer 3 and you can see this black bit and that's because it renders it as if the other object is there and so that would be in complete darkness because no light would be getting to it so I'm going to duplicate the render layer and in the drop down box I'm going to change it to text glow and you, can, you might be able to see in the preview it, it's changed to blue because that is all that's on that layer so the first thing I'm going to do is add a color and then alpha over connect that up and add in our second layer so now it has added them together and it was able to do that because we didn't have sky on and that meant everything else behind it was transparent and that's how that works now what I'm going to do is change the color of that blue to a white with a hue and saturation node and these are um, numbers that just I happen to know work for mine and you'll have to play around to get them to work with yours if you're using different colors or intensities and then this can be 1.7 and then I'll change quickly back to 3D view and I'm just going to put the emit up on this although we're not using indirect lighting which you normally use with the emit value it just creates a really bright material then I'll re-render that and going back to the node editor you can see that I've made those uh, quick changes in the material to make it more intense and it's it's gone to white but again these are values that I know will work with mine and you will have to change them for your own ones now you may wonder why I'm changing it to white and that's just because I want the interior of the glow to be more intense and so appear white and then the outer glow will be bluer and less intense so I'm gonna shift A and add a filter uh, blur and we're taking the original input which was still blue and it changes to Gaussian which is a higher quality but slower blur and we're gonna add this in by using a color mix so we're effectively mixing this on top of our image we had before I'm just gonna plug that in and change it to add and nothing much has changed because effectively it's still the same size so we won't see it yet but as soon as I add the blur and I'm going to put it up to 20 and 20 you can see it's appearing behind and this is how we get the intensity and that's pretty much it there's not really much to it I think in my final one I uh, duplicated this blur to appear in between so that the original white was a bit smaller and a bit softer it gives a bit of a nicer effect and you may notice that these blurs are a bit too big really and that's just because I'm rendering at half resolution if I go back up to full I'll render out the separate layers and then perform the compositing on them as long as you've got that ticked in the render options and there we can see pretty much the final effect and I think in my one I also added in depth of field just because I had ones in the background that I wanted to appear blurred and you can see there's a slight grain and as I said that's just putting up the number of samples in the environment options which are here in the gather options I mean so you put that up to 10 and it would remove all the grain and that's pretty much it and I hope you found this useful and if you think I can do something better please say so in the comments if you have any suggestions for any other tutorials please also say them because I'm always looking for ideas I hope to see you in the next tutorial goodbye